Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome back um, uh, to Tuesday's um, uh, public hearings of the TRRC. Uh, Imam, you have the floor. Uh, you can offer some prayers. Please go ahead. Uzbillahi min ash-shaytan rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin Rahman Rahim Maliki Yawmiddin Iya kan abdu wa iya kan astain Inna shirat al-mustaqim Shirat al-lajin a'lam ta'alihim Ghayri al-bahdu wa bi'alihim wa laddalin Allahu allazi jalalakum Allahu qararan wa samai bina'an Wa sawwarakum Fa ahsanu suwarakum Wa razaqum min dahibat Zalikum allahu rabbukum Fatabarakallahu rabbil alamin Huwa al-khayyu La ilaha illa huwa fa'aduhu mulisina lahu ddini Walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Amin Amin, shukran Imam Jalo Bishop, you have the floor please Thank you, Chairman Lord God of mercy, of grace, of compassion and of love We continue to beseech thee to look kindly upon all humankind That you have made in your image and in your likeness Forgive our human frailty, our human imperfection, our human sins, and our human wickedness throughout the whole world. Restore us to normalcy and restore the situation of the whole world back to normal. And we continue to uphold this nation, the Gambia, as we continue with our TRRC sitting. We pray, Lord, that you will be with all the witnesses that will come before this commission and grant them the boldness to speak the truth and grant the commission the designing spirit to design truth from falsehood. And we also pray for the populace that you will grant them the patience to allow the due process to complete. In Jesus' name we pray with praise and thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Amen. Bishop Udeko. Um, Council, if we are ready to get started, um, uh, please proceed with this morning's witness. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, and members of the audience. Uh, Maria Masingate would lead the next witness. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Commissioners. Mr. Osher, can you please guide the witness in? <laughs> I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. Do swear that. Do swear that. I'll speak the truth. I'll speak the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. But nothing but the truth. So help me God. So help me God. Good morning, Madam Witness. Good morning. Welcome to the TRRC. Thank you. Can you kindly take off the mask so that uh, your speech will be audible? Thank you very much. You're um, just to go over a few rules before we start. Okay. I'll ask you to wait for three seconds after I've asked my questions okay. before you answer it so that we can avoid overlapping of speeches. Okay. Since um, 
you have decided to come to the TRRC to testify, okay. you're required to speak the truth and nothing but the truth. Okay. So I'll urge you in all the things you say that you bear in mind that your role here is to speak the truth. Problem. For today, um, I propose that we go through several topics. Mm -hmm. First, we'll go through your background information so that uh, the commission will get to know who you are. Okay. Then we'll enter into your work experience, your role in the presidential alternative treatment, okay. the protocols and standards observed while you carried out that role, okay. the various trips that you took to Egypt and the reason for those trips. Okay. And finally, we'll discuss your personal views about the entire treatment. Okay. So we can start now. Okay. Can you kindly tell the commission your name? My name is Awandao. When and where were you born? I born at Dipakunda on the 29th December 1975. Can you please provide us with a brief background of your education? Okay, I started my primary school at Bagote Primary School from 82 to 89, and from 89 to 93. Uh, Latikunda Junior Secondary School. Yeah, I finished my schooling there. Upon completion of your secondary education, what did you do? Mm, no, I was a volunteer at the Gambia Red Cross Society. Did you receive any training prior to you being a volunteer at the Gambia Red Cross Society? Yes, first aid training. What kind of training did you receive? First aid training. And how long did your training last? No, those trainings are just um, internal training. It doesn't take long. After working at the Gambia Red Cross Society as a volunteer, what did you do? After the... the uh, Take me to Edward Francis as volunteer yeah, in 1996. What was the nature of the work you were doing at Edward, uh, RBTH? I was a phlebotomist. Can you please break it down for us what it means? Yes, it's a sample collection. Somebody who's responsible for sample collection, blood sample collection. What kind of samples uh, do you collect? Blood. Blood samples. Blood samples from who exactly? From patients. And what kind of patients do you attend to? Sick pa patients at the hospital. Is it generally sick patients? Yes, generally, yes. Uh, who was your supervisor while you were working as a volunteer? At that time, Paje was my head of department at that time. Did your status change um, from being a volunteer? At that time? Yes. No, I was a volunteer for six months after they employed me as fellow veterans. You were a volunteer for six months, yes. and thereafter they employed you. Yes. Before they employed you, did you receive any professional training? No. So you were just co-opted into the yes, just inter laboratory system of yes. the hospital? Just internal training. What kind of internal training did you receive? Bench training, like work, work, working under my supervisor supervisor. And um, who was that supervisor? There, there, there were many. Because any department you go, you, you will be supervised by somebody. What was the procedure like um, at the laboratory when you receive a patient? When you receive a patient, uh, they will come with a request form name, address, age, clinical data, all. 
you check the form with the patient, compare the form, ask the patient whether this is the name, the age. After all, you tell the patient to sit and then collect the sample for the patient. Do you know the rationale behind having that information about a patient before taking the sample from the patient? Yes, to know whether it's the actual patient you are talking to. And this was the standard adopted at the lab yeah. during that time? Yes. Um, did you work with um, any other types of patients apart from the normal patients that you receive that are sick and you have to collect blood samples from them while at the lab? Yes, I only work, uh, work, work. I only see patients, general patients. It's general where I was, it, it's general. For how long did you work in that department where you only see general patients? At the phlebotomy, as phlebotomist. Yes, I was there from 96 to 2007. That I did my laboratory assistant course. And what does the laboratory, laboratory assistant course entail? Yes, it's an um, assistant certificate, laboratory assistant certificate. Uh, when I finished the course, I was posted to blood bank yeah, I, I was working with, the, with them. Where did you receive this training? In the hospital there. Were you certified for that training? Yes. After the training, you said you were transferred to the blood bank. Yeah. Can you tell us what role you played there? Just an assistant laboratory assistant working under supervision. What was the nature of your work as an assistant? Uh, when you come in the morning, you clean your benches. You assist your boss who is there to bleed donors, counsel, test them. For us, we test counsel. If you, want, if you can do bleed, you, you do the bleeding. For me, I was doing the bleeding because I was a phlebotomist before going to the blood bank. I know how to bleed. Can you please explain uh, what bleeding means? For those who come to donate blood, yes, those are the ones we see at the blood bank. Is it to say that drawing blood from yeah, them, yes. that's what is called bleeding? Yeah, yes. And you also mentioned counseling. What does the counseling part entail? Yes, before you donate blood, we counsel you because uh, b before donating blood, we have to test you uh, for HIV, for hepatitis, and all these things. Before testing this, we have to counsel you to seek your uh, seek your consent. You mentioned that you were an assistant there. Mm -hmm. Who was your boss? Mamjara was my boss there. And for how long did you work in the blood bank? I worked for about four to five years, and then I was transferred to the hematology lab. Four to five years, that is from 2007, Seven. right? Yes. To which year? To 2000 and, no, it's three years, from 2007 to 2009. 2009, you were at the hematology lab. Yeah, yes. Can you tell us what work you did there? Uh, general work. We do grouping there. We do malaria tests. That's where we do malaria tests, grouping, cross-matching, all. That's where we did it. And when, we, when you bl bleed donors, that's where we do the cross-matching to see whether the patients are compatible with the blood. It's, it's done at the hematology lab. Apart from working at the hematology lab, did you work anywhere else? No. In 2009, did you have any course to work anywhere else? In 2009, yes. I was told to go to the uh, presidential treatment. 
Can you tell us um, how you were selected to go for the presidential treatment? I was called a day by the then Ministry of Minister of Health, Dr. Malik Jai, that uh, Bachili write a letter to the president that she need an assistant, and they identify me as to assist Bachili. Who was the then Minister of Health? Dr. Malik Jai. And uh, who was Bachili? Abdullah Bachili, who was the one uh, collecting sample at the presidential treatment. Do you know what the presidential alternative treatment was all about by the time they called you and told you that you needed to report there? Yes, I just saw on TV that the president said he can cure HIV, and then they start the treatment in 2007, but for me, I was there in 2009. When you received the call from the Minister of Health, did he tell you what your role would be yes. at the Presidential Alternative Treatment? Yes, the sample collection. You were working at the RBTH then? Yeah. Yes. Not so. Mm -hmm. At the hematology department. Yes. Um, who was your immediate uh, boss at the hematology department? At that time. Yes. It was landing fall. Was he aware of your transfer from the hematology department to the presidential alternative treatment? Yes, he was told. And this transfer you're talking about, was it formal? No, it's just telephone call. Was it normal for you to just receive a telephone call and told that you're supposed to report somewhere else without any formal procedures being done? It's not normal, but as the Minister of Health who called me, I cannot say no. How did you feel about being um, selected to attend, uh, to be part of the presidential alternative treatment team? Uh, yes, because it's the minister who called me, I have to go. But working at the RBTH, I, I like working at the Edward Francis more than going to the presidential treatment. Because that's why when, I, when they told me to stay there, like the other nurses, I told them no, because I don't have anything to do. If I have sample to collect, I will come and collect it and go back to the Edward Francis because patients need me there. We'll deal with that one later. Let's just, uh, just deal with this other line of questioning. Uh, when he called you and told you that uh, you should report to the presidential alternative treatment, did he tell you where to report to? Yes, he told me that Bachelet will come and pick me on Thursday for Canilai, <coughs> where they will do the, that batch treatment at Canilai. And what batch was that? Fourth batch. Can you tell us what happened when you arrived at Kanilai with Bachili? Yes, I went with Bachili and then he took me to the nurse in charge and then told the nurse in charge that this is my assistant. She is going to assist me in sample collection. Who was the nurse in charge? And um, how did you go about collecting sample there? No, I did not collect any sample there. Uh, we reached there on Thursday, then on Friday, they started the treatment with the president. They called me and then I go with Bachelet and sit and watch. <coughs> on that was on Friday. Then the following day on Saturday, I came back. <coughs> Can you tell us what you observed when you were there? Yes, they were doing the treatment, massaging patients and then giving, giving them uh, medicine in a cup. How were they massaging these patients? They, they were rubbed with, I think it's a sea butter. It's, yes, sea butter and uh, I think it's, I don't know, it's other medicine, but I don't know that one. They will rub it and then start massaging. 
We have um, received evidence um, showing uh, patients who were virtually almost naked and being massaged. Was that a picture of what you saw there? No, the one I saw, they, they were given a towel and then they rubbed themselves and then they were massaging the body. While this process was going on, who else was in there apart from you and uh, your boss? Bachelet? No, we were not at the uh, treatment. We were sitting because we are not part of it. It's the nurses and the, and the president who were doing the massaging. And um, when they were massaged, you said they were given something to drink as well? After, yes. Did you see what they were drinking? No, I just saw it because I was sitting far, far away with them. What was the demeanor of the patients after drinking the medication? On that day? Yes. No, I don't see any reaction from them. We were told that um, some of the patients reacted adversely to the medication. Some were vomiting and some were weak after taking the medications. On did you see anything like that? No, on that day I did not see anything like that. From where you were and from where they were drinking the medication, how far was it? It's, it's like this hall. We were sitting here, they are doing the treatment around that area. On that day, how many patients were they treating, if you can recall that is? Mm, I cannot recall, but it's many. After they received the treatment, what happened? After they received the treatment, after the president gone, and then we also go, go back to our various places, and then the following day I went back home. You were sent there to collect no, I did not collect samples. It. No, I was just there to know that I am going to assist Bachelet, but I did not collect any sample at that time. Did you receive any orientation on that day on the work that you were supposed to do there? No, Bachelet told me. Bachelet, Bachelet is the one who told me what to do on that. And did Bachelet tell you how you were going to collect the samples from the patients? Yes. What did he tell you? He told me that whenever they are having a new batch, we'll be collecting sample for the CD4, and then take it to the lab. And whenever they are discharging also, we will be collecting sample in between when, when they are called upon to collect sample for the patients also, we'll go. Prior to you being called to the presidential alternative treatment, mm -hmm. did you at any point while working at RBTH deal with HIV patients? Yes, when I was at the sample collection room, because that, that room was general. You receive all patients, all kind of patients. The first time you went to Kanila, you did not take any samples? No. Then what happened the second time you went again? No, I did not went back there. After the patients come to the Sarakunda General Hospital. So tell us about that arrangement. How do you usually carry out your work with respect to the patients? Uh, like? How do you carry out your work with respect to the patients, like collecting samples? How do you do it? Okay. Whenever they need sample collection, they call me and arrange the patients, call me, and then give me the list. I came and collect the samples and take it to the lab. Apart from the list, did they provide you with any um, baseline information about the patients? No. They just, they, they, the, the list they give me, they write their names, age, and their status. Did you receive any document confirming the status of the patients before you collect the samples? 
some some people they come with their status f uh, results and when when they are giving me the list to collect their samples they also indicate the, their status there you said some was that the case for all of them no the time i collect their sam uh, samples some bring along their uh, status but before i came to collect the samples they used to take the status form with the with the in charge and then they write everything and then give me the list were these new people or the people that were already in the program new people so the new people some of them had documents that um, clearly states that um, they are hiv positive yes and others did not provide any form of document no, the time i was taking their sample but before you enter the treatment, you bring along your status results. Were you the one that was um, given that responsibility to check whether that a particular patient is HIV or not? No, they are the one. So how certain are you that all patients that come through the treatment have to provide a document stating their status. That's what they told me. So it's just what you heard mm -hmm. and not what you yourself have witnessed. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Some of them bring along their uh, status results when they are coming for the sample collection. But some of them, they say they take it to the office to enter. The list they give me, they write status. They write their status. In... Um, in the hospital, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. and in dealing with a matter as sensitive as um, an infectious disease, mm -hmm. is it normal for someone to deviate from a straightforward procedure, like a normal procedure, like providing authentic document mm -hmm. to state that this individual has this disease, mm -hmm. and then another person comes in without any document and says that, oh, I gave it to somebody else. Would that be a normal thing? No. So it was an abnormal thing yes. for some people to provide and while others did not provide the provide. documents yes. and they will say that the document is with somebody else. So when you receive all the list of the patients, mm -hmm. some with some, the medical papers attached to it and others no medical paper attached to it what do you do some of them i i conf confirm their status if they tell me before i came i take some test kits and then confirm their status so you had a test kit that will confirm yes an individual status before you draw samples yes was this applied to all of them that came to you no, those who did not bring along their HIV status results. So did you confirm the status of all of them before you drew, drew their samples? Yes, the first batch I, I met, I confirmed all of them. That's the first batch you met? The fourth, yes, the fourth batch I, I took. The fourth batch was the first batch that you met personally? Yes. And you drew all their samples. Mm -hmm. So what happened afterwards? I, afterwards, I take their samples for CD4. What's the essence of uh, CD4? Yes, to know the, uh, the amount of uh, virus in their body. Because this, they, they said before they give them the medication, they want to know whether their CD4s are high. Because some patients, when the CD4 are low, they, they will not take, take them to the treatment. That's what they said. Has there been any uh, situation where they rejected a patient because the CD4 count is low? Yes. And what was the reasoning behind this? I don't know. Maybe it's their criteria. Who was the person that determined the criteria for a patient to be admitted into the program? It's Dr. Mbou. What was his role in the treatment? He was the director general of the program.
So after collecting the, uh, the samples from the patients, that's the first batch, mm -hmm. what did you do with that sample? I take it to the lab for testing. Which lab did you take it to? Uh, uh, the uh, peripheral uh, public health lab at Kutu. Um, who was in charge of that lab? Mood Lamin Jaju and Alphonse. They are there at that time. Was this lab in any way associated with um, the RBTH? Yes, it's the uh, public health lab, research lab. And um, what kind of test would they conduct on the samples you sent? CD4. Only the CD4? Yes. Uh, you have been working uh, with um, blood samples for a while. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to HIV patients, what kind of tests are usually con conducted on, on, on persons that have HIV AIDS? Do you know? CD4 that is? and viral load. Can you please give us a, like a distinction between the CD4 and the viral load? The CD4 is, is a white blood cell which uh, help the immune system. The viral load is the amount of virus in the, in the body. For a HIV patient, mm -hmm. which one, which test is more uh, beneficial for an individual to know his or her status? The, the test, the antigen antibody test. Sorry? The antigen antibody test. The antigen and antibody Ant test. Mm -hmm. is, is, well, is that test different from the CD4 count and the viral load? Yes, it's different. The antigen antibody test is the test they did to know whether you are HIV or not. And, um, at the start of the treatment, mm -hmm. apart from the CD4, that is when you joined in, mm -hmm. did you do the, any of those tests that you mentioned, the anti, antibody test and the antigen test? Yes, that is the test to confirm whether the patient is positive or not. Did, you, did you draw samples to check the viral load and the antigen test? No, the, the viral load, no. The, the viral load is the test we take to Egypt because that time there is no viral load massive here. So it's only the CD4 count yeah. that is looked Done. into yes. at the lab. Yeah. And um, after they've checked the CD4 count, can you tell us what happened, what your role is from there? I take the results from the lab and bring it to the in charge or the secretary and give, it, give the results to them. When you're recording, uh, sorry, I missed this point, so I need to go back to it. When you are uh, drawing the samples from an individual, mm -hmm. huh? um, how do you usually label these samples? We use numbers. That's numbers. And how do you determine that a particular number is linked to a particular individual? Yes, the list they gave me, they number it from one to any number. Like if I call number one, take the sample, I'm going to, on that tube, I'm going to write one, zero one. And then that, that is the number going to the lab. For the purpose of proper recording, like every institution, obviously, mm -hmm. will ensure that there's proper recording system. Mm -hmm. How do you record these uh, numbers and codes? Yes, they they are the one who filed because me, after after doing the test, I bring the original list and then compare it to the numbers I took to the lab, and then give it to them for filing. Was there like specific numbers given to each patient? Yes. So there was a unique number given to every individual yes. patient, mm -hmm. and each was separate from the other? Yes. And if you start numbering, for example, you said you're numbering number one, okay. two, 
and the one will be this name, the two will be the other name. Yeah. How would you then identify all the patients? Like, probably patients that are like a whole lot. Yes, you take those numbers. For, if it is from number one to 50, you, you, you label the tubes also one to 50. You know that one is for this number one, two is for number two. So it's just on, uh, let's say, Alajibabu, mm -hmm. number one, mm -hmm. Bintasaho, number two. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is the trend you follow. Yes. What of when the samples come back, how do you now link the samples to those numbers? How do you link the samples to those when, numbers? When they come back. Uh -huh. Like when they come back. Yes. Or when, when, when I when When I'm you receive the samples, I'm, yes. Yes, I did the same. You do the same thing. Yes. And you're able to track and trace down the numbers. Yes. That was for the first time that you yes, did it. Yes, and you, you, you write the batch number. And you write the batch number. Mm -hmm. How about the second time that you went to collect samples at the presidential alternative treatment? In between the treatment or? In between the, the treatment, yes. Yes, those, those samples were not many. Maybe those, are those people who are very sick and they want to repeat their CD4, that's the one I took during the treatment. You mentioned people who were very sick. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you tell us about these people? Yes, they are very weak and sick, really. And then if the, maybe they want to know their uh, CD4, whether the CD4s are going down or increasing, that's the time I came back and then collect their samples again. And um, you started with the first batch? Fourth. Fourth batch, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, how many people in the fourth batch mm -hmm. did you notice that were very sick at some point during the program? I can't recall, but Sometimes they used to call me and tell me that this and this and this need to be tested again to know the CD4 count again. Was it um, quite often that they would call you to say that this person is really sick and you need to come back no, and not, check? it's not often. It's time to time. Sometimes, uh, even during the treatment time, I don't even go there more than twice until the discharge time. Apart from collecting the sample mm -hmm. when they start, mm -hmm. you also collect the sample during the treatment when they call you yes. to say that somebody is really, really sick mm -hmm. and you need to check the CD4 count. Yeah. Um, what other times do you usually collect samples? When they are discharging. For the fourth batch, mm -hmm. what was the time frame within which you went back again to collect their samples? I think it's after six months. After six months of treatment. Mm -hmm. That was when you went back to collect their samples. That one was for CD4 to be done here but the viral load to Egypt. Okay. Now let's talk about within that six months, mm -hmm. you went to collect their samples. Mm -hmm. And you said when people are sick, you usually go there to collect samples. Mm -hmm. Can you recall how many times you went to collect samples of six sick people within that six months for period? For the fifth bite, for the fourth bite? Yes. No, I can't remember. So tell us when you go to collect the samples mm -hmm. at, at the point that they are discharged. Tell us w how you do it. For the discharge? Yes. Yes. I just collect the uh, two different samples. One for CD4 here, and then the uh, other one to Egypt for the viral load. Um, how do you usually collect the samples? Is it that... Um, you just go there and then you draw blood from the same people no, that they you give drew me, from? they give me list again. This they, time they, around, they give you a list? Yes, yes. And um, can you recall how many people you attended to the first time? 
the fort fort bar yes that one is up to 60 something when you went back for their discharge can you recall how many people you collected samples that's from? what I, what i mean it's about 60 something patients about 60 something patients mm -hmm. um you remember you told us about the filing system where you have the name of the person and a number attached to it mm -hmm. Now, when you went back for their discharge, mm -hmm. did you use the same record or make reference to that old record? No, I used the new list they gave me. So they provided you with a new list? List. Mm -hmm. now, because that one, that one also we take for viral load. Um, let's look at the normal thing that happens at the hospital. Mm -hmm. When you receive a patient, mm -hmm. especially a HIV patient, yes. and um, you have a history of that patient in the file, mm -hmm. when the patient comes back again, mm -hmm. what do you do? You check the file. You check the file, not so. Mm -hmm. This time around, uh, you told us that you do, do not make reference to the old record. Mm -hmm. Instead, a new one is made. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? Yeah. So how certain are you that it's the same samples from the same individuals you collected the last time that you're collecting this time around? Yes, the ol yes it's the same. But the only thing they added is the viral load. I know that you said the only thing they added is the viral load. Yes. That means an extra test is being done. Yes. And I'm not talking about the extra test. Yes, it's, the, it's almost the same list. Yes. The only thing they added, because that one, the first one was CD4. Yes. This one, CD4 and viral load. Yes, that is yes. the test itself. Yes. I'm talking about the individual. Yes. Because when you go to, like I explained earlier, when you go to a hospital mm -hmm. and you're sick, they make reference mm -hmm. to the old record that you have with them before they attend to you. Mm -hmm. And you, as a lab technician, you know that you cannot just have fresh documents for a patient who has a history with you. Mm -hmm. You have to go back to the old records in order to merge them together mm -hmm. and uh, go with the flow. But then if you have a new uh, record, that means you are discarding the old one. No, so, sorry, it's not discarding. They give, it's the same list, but what they added is only the viral load. But it's the same list, so, the same people. That is what, 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 I'm, what I'm talking about. You know, you have a history. Do you look at the old history? When I'm taking the... Yes, do you? For the discharge. Yes, do you look at the old history? No. So you, after six months, you have no knowledge of what happened to the patients for the past six months, correct? No. And then you're given another list, and you have to draw samples from the patients, correct? Mm -hmm. Do you do... Um, an antibody test there in then, do you do that? No, when you they don't are discharge it. Yes. No. Do you check the status of the individual there no. when you're taking the samples for the discharge? No. So you have no idea whether the patient you're checking even has HIV or not? No, that list, the list, that I, the first list I took, their status are there. They, it's the same list. The only thing they add is the viral load. That's yes. what I'm saying, yeah. That is, we're saying, basically because saying the, this. the list, their status are there. Yes, we're basically HIV saying. HIV 1 or HIV 2. Yeah, we're basically saying the same thing, but we're not understanding each other okay. here. Okay, okay. Uh, let me explain again. You have an old list mm -hmm. and you have an old record. Mm -hmm. The old record has the person's status and has the person's CD4 count when they start. Mm -hmm. Not so. Yes. And then when you go back to collect their sample, you do not have the person's name and status, do you? No, the status is not there. The status is not there. The person's previous CD4 count, is it there? No. It's not there. So you're just given a list and a number of people mm -hmm. that you have to draw samples from, correct? Yes. Okay. Because that one is the one we take for viral load. What we need there is only the status, whether it's HIV 1 and 2. We don't need this CD4 counts results there. So you don't look at the history again? 
the, the last history. Yes, the previous one. You don't look at it. No. You just move on from there. Yes, because this one is a viral load. Do you even have access to the previous record when you go back to draw blood? No, no, because the, re the re records is with them, the secretary or the nurse in charge. And you don't even know, do you even know whether they're the same people, mm -hmm. exactly the same people that you collected the samples from the previous time? Yes, it's the same people. How sure are you that it's the same people? You are dealing with about 60-something people, right? Yes. And six months later, mm -hmm. you're called back to take the samples mm -hmm. of another list of individuals. Mm -hmm. So how do you know that you're dealing with the ex exactly the same people that because you handled it's the same, before? the same list they gave me before. The only thing they add is the viral load. That's why I said it's the... the, the, the all, it's all the patients, it's all of them, 60-something patients. Because uh, before I no, go ahead, collect, please. collected those ones, the only changes is the viral load they add on the form. So you are talking about the form itself mm -hmm. and the changes made on the form. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the individuals themselves. Like, um, let's say, for example, I meet uh, new people for the first time. Yeah. 67 of them, mm -hmm. and I collected their samples. Mm -hmm. If I come back again in six months, I can only remember a few. I cannot remember yes. each individual face. Yes. As a, no, like a reasonable person will not be able to remember each individual face yes. of everyone it's that true. they treated six months ago. It's true, yeah. So that is why I ask, how sure are you that it's the same individuals that you drew blood from six months ago that you are drawing blood from six months after? Ah, because they, they gave me the list and tell me that it's the, it's the patients they admitted, and I met them there admitted. So you just go by what they said to you? Yes. That these are the same patients that you drew blood from, yes. and these are the same patients that are here, yes. that you, we, we, and we are requesting that you draw blood from them? From them, yes. Okay. Um, do you even have any kind of like relationship with the patients, like a chit chat or otherwise? Do you have that kind of space for that? No, maybe the ones I knew before, but the rest, I don't have that. So you are not, you're not like totally familiar with all the patients? No. Okay. So let's move ahead. You, you mentioned um, Egypt. Okay. And you mentioned that when they were being discharged, that you had to take the samples yes. to Egypt. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Yeah, uh, because Bachelet went there for the first time. When Bachelet went there for the first time, when I took over from him, because he went for studies, when I took from him, uh, I was called by Dr. Bo and said, whether you have a passport, I said yes. Say the, Deputy Chief of Protocol will come and pick it from you to Dakar for visa because you're supposed to go to Egypt to take the samples. I say, okay. They took the passport and then later on, after two weeks, I was on night duties. When I'm going home, I receive a call from the Deputy Chief of Protocol and said, we are going to Egypt on Saturday. I say, okay. He said, now, on Friday evening, you can go to the hospital and then collect the samples for the patients. Then Saturday morning, we'll leave. And um, that was how you went back to collect the samples for the discharge? Yes. And how did you collect the samples? Was it the same normal thing that you same usually normal. do? The, the only difference is you have to separate this one from the red cells to the plasma. You take the plasma to Egypt, you leave the red cell, because if you are transporting blood, you separate it, and then put it in a separate tube, freeze it, and then the following day we leave. Uh, if new people were added to the test, mm -hmm. would you detect it? 
No. So you would not be able to detect whether because there's I, an addition or not? I don't know all of them. Uh, the system that you described, you mentioned uh, uh, that you usually do like Adamafai, number one, mm -hmm. Isatufai, number two, Ule, number three. Mm -hmm. And then when you come back again, you have to do another Adamafai, number one, Ule, number three. So there are no unique numbers assigned to any specific patients, no. correct? No. Okay. So, um, Let's move to your trip to Egypt. Mm -hmm. uh, you collected samples from the patients. Um, your passport was uh, prepared, and then you were heading to Egypt. Mm -hmm. Did they tell you um, about any form of formal uh, arrangements made with any lab in Egypt, perhaps? No. Did you well, have? I, I think, but it talk to the deputy chief of protocol or they talk to the team because me just to collect sample and then because when we reach Egypt we spend a day in a hotel without knowing the lab after all uh, 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 Jiba the deputy chief of protocol try to trace Bachelet's number and then call Bachelet and then Bachelet explain to him where the lab is, and then we move. So it was only Bachili that knew where the lab yeah, because was? because he went there at, at first. Sorry, how about the people that were heading the, treat, the presidential alternative treatment? Didn't they know No, I don't the think lab? they know, because it's only Bachili who was taking samples. He went to Morocco, Senegal, and then Egypt. How about, um, let's say, the head of the treatment? Did no, he know? No, because it's, that time, Bachelet, Bachelet was the only one going. For me, I went with somebody, but Bachelet, he only go alone. Do you know whether there was any formal arrangement between the treatment and the lab that you took the samples? No, I don't know. Did you, do you even know uh, if the lab knew exactly why those samples were being taken there? No, they did not tell me anything there. Well, um, but they know Ablai. When we reach, Jiba told him that we are referred here by Abdullah Bachelet. They say they know Abdullah. That's what they told us. And Abdullah Bachelet worked at the RVTH, correct? Yes, yes. So when the samples are being taken there, mm -hmm. was it done um, in the name of the RVTH or no. the presidential alternative treatment? I don't know what they, but it's not from RBTH. I don't know which arrangement they have, but it's not RBTH. Can you recall uh, where this lab was situated? The lab we went at, I cannot remember the name, but the lab was at around Tahir Square in Cairo. In, sorry? Tahir Square in Cairo, that's mm. where the lab was. Yes. You said the first day you did not know no. where the lab was, no. and After the person, the person that traveled with you? Yes, called Bachelet. And who was the, this person, Jiba, that traveled with you? Yes. Who Jiba. was he? Deputy Chief of Protocol. The Deputy Chief of Protocol. Oh, yes. Um, when carrying medical samples uh, mm -hmm. to another place, um, what, under normal circumstances, what kind of arrangements are usually made? Uh, arrangements should be made within the lab and the samples, where the samples are from, in a normal circumstance. But I don't know which arrangement they made. You were just told, take the samples, take it there. That's yeah. all you knew about it. Yes, they talked to Jiba, and it's Jiba who told me that we are going. Maybe they, they make arrangements, with, but I don't know. But that's what they told me. Did you carry any documents with you when you were going there? It's only the list of names, list of patients we took. Only the list? Mm -hmm. Did you have any requests with you? For, the, for that lab? Yes, no. a request, a formal request for the lab to do a particular test with no, respect to No, for that lab, any samples you have, they can do it as far as you, you pay, because you pay for each sample. 
you paid for the samples. Yes. Can you recall um, who made the payments for the samples? They, they give the money to is the Is Jiba who bring along the money? I think it's from the president because it's a lot of money because each sample is $65. Each sample was $65? Yes. And um, Jiba was the one that Did usually carried the money? Yeah. And you went up to the hospital, made yes. the payments, and no, they just... When we went to the lab, we give them the sample, arrange them for them, and then we go back to the hotel. When yeah. they f when they threw with the results, they call us. We do an go and do the payment, and then they gave us the results. Did the lab ask you any questions as to the samples you took there? For me, they they asked me whether these people are doing treatment, but they did not ask me which kind of treatment. I said yes, they are doing treatment. Was that the only question they asked about that? Me, yes. They were not curious as to why you were there? Uh, maybe they asked Jiba, but for me, the, that's the only question they asked me. So how many days did you spend in Egypt? We spent two weeks there. Two weeks waiting for the samples? For waiting for the results, yes. So what happened after you received, wait, before that, um, the numbering of the samples to Egypt, how was it done? The same thing. The same? The same number. So it was the same Fatu Nyang number mm -hmm. one? But for, for them, we give them the list. You gave them the list of the names of yes, people? Yes, yes, because when they are fit through with the test, they have to type the names. Under, the, under that name, they write whether it's undetectable or a million copies or so. We have to leave the form with them. So they gave you the list and then you came back? Yes. Okay, what happened um, when you came back? After the the results ready, they will call us and then we go and pay and receive the results. And you bring them back? Yes. We Who do you them. usually hand over the test results to? To Dr. Mbo. And uh, we have, uh, oh, we had seen uh, videos of where Dr. Mbo will actually read these test results. Mm -hmm. And some test results will say, the CD4 count is, they will, mi they will mention like millions of copies or so. The viral load. The, sorry, the viral load. They will mention millions of copies. Yes. Then after they will say, this person is undetectable. Yes, we have some undetectable on the list, but it will not be more than 15. Out of 60 something, you, you, you don't have a undetectable more than 15 patients. When you take the sample of a person that does not have HIV mm -hmm. and you check the viral load, mm -hmm. what will it tell you? Undetectable. When you take the CD4 count of a person that does not have uh, HIV and you check it, what does it tell you? The CD4 will be high. So um, it's like um, you, at first you told us that you're not even sure whether the person that they gave you the test, you're not sure whether the person has AIDS or not. Mm -hmm. So you taking that person's blood sample to a lab, if the person does not have AIDS, the machine will say undetectable, correct? Mm -hmm. For the viral, yes. Now in an instance where they're actually checking for the antibodies. Mm -hmm. When you take um, a person that does not have HIV mm -hmm. to a lab, what will the results be? Negative. Negative. That is a definitive negative, not so. Yeah. But then, if you are looking for um, the viral load of the person, it will tell you undetectable. undetectable yes. Antibody will tell you Negative. Negative. Mm -hmm. Correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I'm beginning to understand these things. Do you know why they did not check for the viral load during this treatment? No, there is no machine for viral load here. But was there a machine for that in Egypt? For viral load? Yes. Yes. Do you know why they didn't do that? 
the viral load. Yes. That's what we, they were doing. The, sorry, my m medical uh, science knowledge is limited. It's, it's limited to what I've we read did the for this. We CD4 count here. Yes. But the viral load, we take it to Egypt because there was no viral load mass in here. Okay. The one that will say negative, can you tell us why they did not check for that? Here. In Egypt, when you went to Egypt? No, because we have it here. The, the antigen antibody test. So they had it here? Yes. That's the test we do to know whether it's HIV, you are HIV positive or so. Can you tell us why they did not do that test here, in the Gambia here, for the patients? We did it. We did all here. For the discharge patients? Yes. Why didn't they do that for them? Because when you are positive, you, you, you always positive. That doesn't necessarily mean you have to do that test again. What was the purpose of the presidential alternative treatment? To treat uh, HIV. Was it to treat or to cure? To cure, yes, to cure HIV. Now, if you're saying that a particular treatment can cure an individual, which is the most suitable test to do for a patient that has, for some patients that have undergone such a treatment, which would have been a definitive um, conclusion to that person's uh, status? To see that that, that pa patient is negative. Yes. No, that I don't. Know. I don't have any idea on it because HIV is curable. Is, is curable. Yes. But what of if it was like curable? What if, if, the, if like, for say, there is this treatment for HIV that can cure someone because that is what the treatment was selling? Yes, if it is going to be cured. Yes. When they said this pa patient is cured. Yes, you which would have been the most suitable test to antigen, do for Antigen and antibody test? Antigen and antibody test. Yes. And the antigen and antibody test, was it ever carried out on patients that were being discharged? No. Because if you, if you do, the, do that test, you will, they will still be positive. Because they were not cured. Uh, yes, because... Because the treatment was a host, it was not working. Ah, but anyway, if, if, if you test it again, you, they will still be positive. So Maybe the viral load can be undetectable or so, but for the antigen antibody test, if you do it again, still now it will be positive. And the antigen and antibody test was not done because they knew that the patients were not cured. Yes, it's not, it's not done. The, the time of the discharge, the antigen antibody is not done. It's only the viral load they did. How many trips did you take to Egypt to? Um, five. Five. That's a whole lot, five trips. Yes. How many undetectables during that five trips? Each trip, I told you, each trip maybe you will not have more than 15 undetectable. Um, and in all those um, test results that showed undetectable, they never checked for the antigen and antibodies? For me, they, I did not do it. And. Um, for certain, they did not even, you cannot even tell which individual's test results you were actually taking to Egypt to check the CD4 count and the viral load. Mm -hmm. You cannot say for certain that that person that you were taking his um, test results was HIV positive. Can you for certain say that? No. You cannot? No because they just gave me a list, as you said. So if, for example, let's say, people that were healthy, strong, mm -hmm. and didn't have any virus in their system, if they were added into it, you would never have been able to detect it. No, but the list they gave me, all of them are admitted there. That, that's my doubt. I don't, all the, all the patients I collected were admitted. That's even if all the patients were admitted there, mm -hmm. but how do you know for certain that all the patients actually have HIV? No, I don't know. Uh, 
if you do not check their history and you don't have any baseline information when you draw blood for the purpose of them being discharged, yes, how they, would you know that they actually have HIV? Because the list they gave me to collect the viral load, their status are indicated there. It's only the list that the yes. status is indicated, indicated yes. on, and not the actual individual telling you, well, no. and not you confirming whether this person has AIDS or not. No. Okay, then uh, I think this will be a c convenient place to stop. Uh, there is, it's time for the tea break now, Mr. Chairman.